How can you simplify the scene, especially a complex building like this one? Hello, I'm Tim Wilmot, a watercolour painter, and I produce full length video tutorials with commentary up on this uh, YouTube channel, which will help you hopefully improve your watercolour techniques and create some great looking paintings. Now in this demo, I'm going to be painting this Mihas scene. Mihas is, that's spelled M-I-J-A-S. Mihas is a very popular and very pretty town in the Costa del Sol region of southern Spain. And look at this curved building and all the little bits and pieces on the balconies. It curves around both sides. Um, it's got some challenges with perspective, so a different kind of angle on that side to on the left hand side to the to the right hand side. Over on the left, over on the left hand side, there's a lot going on. The distant shops, you can just about make out some distant shops. There's I, I think it's uh, private residential apartments um, in these top levels and then ground level you've got this sort of snaking line of um, shops and souvenir shops and so on um, that you typically find in Mihas, a few little little cafes and restaurants as well uh, but over on the left distant shops people shop lines parasols um, the other challenge is that i took this photo at a slight angle, <laughs> maybe I had a, too many sangrias or something, but it's a slight angle and I just need to imagine it a bit more level um, and compensate for that. But I think it'll make a great watercolour subject. Uh, sometimes I find anyway that the most complex scenes, when you simplify them down, they can turn out better than expected. And sometimes a very complex scene can be more difficult because, or sorry, rather a, a simple scene could be more difficult because you've got to think with a simple scene, what, what extra can I include to make it more interesting? Whereas with a more difficult one, it may be easier because we can just remove things. We can, we can change the scenery around. We can add things, take things away. We've got a, a lot more choice and it can be a little bit easier. So what I want to try and do with this painting is cap capture the essence of the scene, the curved tiers. We've got four, um, one, two, three, four. We've got four tiers of, um, of uh, rooftops here cascading their way down this, this building, those curved tiers. Uh, we've got a, a little bit of light over here on the left hand side, lovely light hitting these shop lines, a little bit of light on some of the um, the, the rooftops there, the, um, the, the lean-to rooftops there covering the balconies. Uh, we've got some lovely dappled shade on the left-hand side. Um, there's a horse and there's lots of horse and, horse and carts, horse and carriages that take visitors around. I'm going to miss that one out. I'm just going to have a a couple of figures over there on the left but a lot to a lot to consider things to remove things to add in and yeah the other thing is this lovely um dappled shade here which is sort of fanning out because the light's coming from the the top left we've got a lovely bit of dappled shade coming out from from that tree which would be quite nice from a a composition point of view so let's see how we get on If you want to keep seeing my reference photo as I paint the demo, best thing to do is open up another tab in your browser, go to this same video location in that uh, new tab and pause it on the opening few minutes where I've gone through the little intro. Or better still, and excuse the plug, you can join my Patreon scheme, uh, patreon.com slash Tim Wilmot, where I share 
a lot of my high resolution images for my paintings and I also provide some critiques as well if you're interested. So down to the first stage, the initial drawing, as I always do, just getting in the main outlines and this time starting with the main building, almost like a focal point and trying to very roughly at this stage, just get in those curved tiers um, that curve round to the left and then curve round to the right. And at ground level, those shot blinds as well. On the left hand side, there's a nice sort of curved frame. We've got the canopy of the tree in the top left corner. And then coming down, going across the bottom left corner, a nice sort of shadow pattern, which I'm not draw those in, but I'm just in my mind, I just know where they're going to go. All right. And just in the middle here, going over to the right, I'm going to have a few parked cars. I'm not sure at this stage exactly which parts of the cars will be in shade. I'm, I'm not really copying the photograph and the parked cars they are moving around just to suit the composition a little bit more. So there's four or five parked cars from the middle going, going over to the right and then to the left of the centre I'm going to have a couple of cars in here. The light's coming from the top left corner so that will show a little bit of light on the left hand side of the cars. Now it, in the shadows of the tree, I've introduced a couple of figures walking towards us. That's the right hand side of the building. Now, in the background, on the right hand side, there are a few little buildings and I can't really detect too much from the photograph what they are, but I'd just give the impression of something over there, rooftops and a little bit of the, the front of some buildings. Maybe we have some shadows going across those diagonally, something like that, just to have them maybe a a little bit lighter in the context of the of the background. So that pretty much is is stage one and the, the objective is just to get in the main shapes, the main objects of this building, getting the composition right and it has to be right before I go on to the painting stage. If I try and make things up while I'm painting, I normally go just horribly wrong. So my four stages of painting, first of all, the drawing. Secondly, the first wash, really trying to cover the whole of the paper with some underlying colours, some of which I won't touch again, like the sky and the road surface typically, so the top and the bottom of the painting. So getting the first wash, covering all of the paper except for those whites or lights that I want to preserve. And then step three, going in with the darks, so with a smaller brush darker values, that's going to add some form into the key things in the painting and provide a little bit of depth as well, Back getting, you know, getting the background and the middle ground and the, the foreground right. And then last step is some little details with a smaller brush. So here I'm adding in the sky, starting from the top, gradually working my way down 
and just picking up anything that was in the palette from the previous painting. Can't remember what it was. <laughs> I can't remember what the colours were. But that sky, if you look at the, if you look back at the photograph, it's just sort of like a very light blue or something. It's um, can't really describe what the colour would have been. So and it, and it's a it's a fairly small part as regards the area, a fairly small part of the overall painting. So I don't need to bother about that. So that won't be painted again. And I'm just gradually coming down. The board's on a slight slope. And I'm just covering the, the apartment building here, this curved building. And uh, at this stage, I don't really know how I'm going to... I've got in the main levels of the tiers, but I don't know how I'm going to successfully get in the the tiled roofing, the, the, the levels of the tiled roofing, and then the actual layers of the building, they're, they're, they're kind of like a sort of dark blue in a way. Anyway, back to the left-hand side. Now this is in the distance, so not too much detail. As I say, in this stage I'm just covering up the um, the, the paper and a little bit of blue for the buildings on the right hand side. So there's a little bit of blue there for the layers of the building. And to be honest with you, it's going to look an absolute total mess at this stage. But hopefully, fingers crossed, it will come right in the end. I'll, let, let me uh, run through my palette here. So running from the top, we've got neutral tint, then burnt, th th these palette, these colours never change. Um, neutral tint, burnt umber, uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, viridian green, I just touched some burnt sienna there. Yellow ochre, viridian green. V viridian green with burnt umber is a lovely green for foliage. Should try it. Nice, I will be using it with this painting. Um, Vidin green, cobalt green, then in the middle, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue. I get through loads of ultramarine blue. I'm constantly buying new tubes. Um, then Amazon crimson is touched there. Uh, sorry, that was ultimately blue I just touched there. And then Alison Crimson below that. A Windsor Red. I used to use Cadmium Red, but I've swapped that for Windsor Red. It's a little bit um, cheaper. And just, to, just as vibrant, to be honest with you. Uh, so that's Windsor Red. And then there's a Light Red. And Cadmium Orange. And then Lemon Yellow. And right down at the bottom in the middle is a Lavender which is quite a nice sort of opaque-ish colour I can use for skies or backgrounds. Anyway, down to the painting, gradually making my way down to the bottom. Um, this street and road, I've got fairly light in the distance, but come a little bit stronger towards the foreground. And I'm dragging the brush, you see at a slight angle, because the road does go uphill just a little bit and maybe just to assist the feeling of that gradient, I've, I've painted a slight angle there. Um, but when you look closely at the road surface, it's not uh, uniform in in colour and, and values, so there's subtle little bits in there, um, browns and blues. You, you'll find that you'll find that with any road, road surface. You think it's grey, but actually, if you look more closely, it, it could be like a little bit of burnt sienna in there, or it could be a little bit of red in there. Um, so 
I do try to, I mean, that, that road is quite a big part of the overall painting. Um, it's more than a third. Yeah, but it's more than a third um, of the actual area. So I want to try and uh, make it a bit more interesting. Um, that lower third there with those different levels, those different values in there. So now I just need to let everything dry quite nicely. Sometimes I will use a hairdryer to speed things up. I don't mind actually if the paint is a little, the, the paper's a little bit damp. Here I'm just lifting off, I noticed as I was looking at it, I noticed that some of the shop lines could be a little bit lighter. So while the paper is still quite, it's quite damp, it's sort of gone past the moist stage. So I would call moist, if you looked at the paper against the light, it's gonna be quite shiny, reflective, whereas damp is a, a bit duller. And it's still at that damp stage. So I can go in with a small brush a synthetic brush here and just gently lift off and just get in a, just a subtly lighter value on some of those leading um, shop lines just to and it's, it, they, they're going to appear lighter when I go in with the darks around them but uh, and in fact I could have I could have left them um, really bright like like I did on parts of the cars I could have actually left them left the white paper showing through there. But anyway, I've done it now, um, painted over them and then lifted off with a small damp. So I, I damp the synthetic brush first of all and uh, just lift it off gently, maybe squeeze it out, squeeze the brush out um, before I lift off again. So that's the initial wash really quite simple but the, the biggest the longest stage is what I'm doing now going with the darks and generally I would start with any background so typically in a landscape it might be some background hills so these these hills here quite nicely go around the, the actual building um, and they will be, certainly on the left hand side, they're going to be a little bit darker than the building. Uh, on the right hand side, I'm going to have them a similar value to the right hand side of the building. But I'm going to, going to come down to the background buildings, leave them a little bit light. Now I'm going greener at one, trying to go a little bit greener and darker as I come down to, to a lower level of the, the background hills. So this, this video is all about simplification and in those background hills, that the more you look at them, you can see different trees and maybe some far buildings as well. But really, this has got to be, I think it's got to be kept quite simple because the more detail I put into the background hills, it's going to appear a bit closer to us. And also, you think the background hills are full of trees, therefore I've got to go with a green. If the green is too vibrant, that too would bring, would give the illusion of it coming forwards. So I've got to be a bit careful with um, not going too, not going too bright with the, with the green. Keep a jagged um, edge to the mountain, this hill, call it a mountain, it's probably more of a hill, but it's actually quite a steep area here. You, uh, Mihas is a good few kilometers from the coast. It's not on the coast, it's sort of high up in the, uh, the hills. And uh, most of the town or village is quite flat, but you get some nice views over to the left. So 
probably south towards the sea is down to the left and then to the right is going north. Now my plan here is that I've gone over on got over to the left, continued these background hills, uh, coming down a little bit of blue just to there's some buildings down there. Um, there's a little sort of gap down at the bottom there where you can walk up into the center of town and just really coming down to street level and uh, to the tops of the shop lines. A lot of this, a lot of what I'm painting here will be obliterated with the tree. So I don't need to be, um, don't need to have too much detail. Uh, come, now gradually come over and this is where I'm going to try and give the form of the these four different tiers of the building. As I said earlier, it looks like this building looks like a total mess and um, well, you don't don't give up. You just sort of pursue it really, and uh, and it should come right by adding in these these darks now. So need to give a bit of thought. I haven't got actually any good pencil lines showing through the initial wash just to guide me here. So uh, hopefully with a bit of luck, I'm going to get it right. So starting off fairly narrow in the distance and then getting a bit thicker to the, the curved bit that's facing us. And then it, and then it sort of goes a little bit narrow as it, as it curves around to the right, goes a little bit narrow again. Use, a, use my fingertips just to blend that blue in with the background hills. With my mixing, I've got three main mixing wells on display here. So at the top, that blackish stuff, I generally mix my darks in there. And then generally speaking, the middle one will be cools and blues and then the bottom one generally warms or greens. I do sometimes mix a little bit of green next to my yellow. There's a spare little well there, little, little kind of section and um, because that's quite handy for the location of the yellow, I might, I might mix in a few greens there. Right, that's level number two. Again, now I've got to be careful here with the tiles. I find with these Mediterranean rooftops or these older buildings where you've got rows of tiles, if you add in too many lines, it just doesn't look right. It sort of, um, you lose that looseness of it a bit and it's, it, it's almost akin to maybe a building painting in individual bricks it's just too much detail so anyway I've done it on that I might need to just go over that with um, a little bit of red later on because that where I've, where those lines were the tiles that's going to be in the shade up there on the right hand side most of the light is going to be on the left That's the third layer, and then I'm going to have the other one, another layer just above the shop lines. Brush I'm using here is a mop brush, sort of a medium sized mop brush. This is a squirrel mop, but to be honest with you, it could. Be it's got to be a brush that's got good water retaining capability and also a good edge to it um, and ideally also a good point to it so I can be a bit more precise painting around objects. 
And you also find you accidentally leave little bits of the paper showing through, as I'm doing there when I'm doing that sort of crisscross um, brush strokes, then you, you do leave little bits of the paper showing through, which could be, which, which could be, we, we could give the impression of little rooftops or something like that there. And also there's one or two little gaps in the background hills I can see that I've left and uh, just breaks up, could be far rooftops catching the light a little bit perhaps. Now for a little bit of foliage getting in some of the greens and the brush I'm using here is I'm actually going back through some of my old brushes I've, I found uh, the other day an older Skoda versatile synthetic brush. The hairs are quite long um, but for some reason I'd chopped the hairs about a bit. I got out a pair of nail scissors and I um, I displayed out the hairs and then I chopped it a little bit just to make a, a bit of a more interesting edge to it. So anyway, it's not it's not brilliant, but I thought uh, certainly for foliage, you don't want a brush that's too perfect because you want to get some in interesting edges in, which an old brush or um, a brush that, that has lost its point and you splay out the hairs, you get some interesting, uh, interesting edges forming. So here I am mixing a little bit of the, the greens. Now I'm going for the same brush, going for the some of the rooftops here. The paint is still quite damp, so it's going, I'm going to get some soft edges. It's all going to blend in quite nicely. And mixing up a bit of light red, a bit of cadmium orange, just to go perhaps a little bit more I guess what I'm trying to do is get a, a sort of terracotta type feeling to it. Now I can't go too bright, otherwise I can't go too sort of red, otherwise it's going to be a bit um, going to bring it a bit too too far forwards and mess it up a bit. Paper's still damp. Mess it up. Move the colours around. When I go in with the detail stage, that's when I can add a, a, again a little bit bit of extra form to it when all this is dry so it's still quite damp at the moment and uh, these colours can blend in quite well. So back to the greens uh, mixing it down in this bottom well here and that viridian green bit of burnt umber. There's a tree just to the left of the middle that's quite dark and it's sort of just in front of the shop. So I'm going to, with these trees, you can always, I mean, trees are never permanent unless they're really old, ancient trees. A lot of these street trees, they could be here one year and gone the next. So really they're, they're up to be moved around to suit the composition. But I thought this one was actually quite nice. Otherwise, and also it, it does cover the balconies as they're going away from us down to the left. I don't really know what's happening down there. So I'm just sort of covering up um, with this tree here, that area. Bit of a cheat, but it should, should work okay. So 
So next step is to fill in that top left corner, the background over on the left hand side is nearly dried, which is getting drier quite quickly. And with this brush, same brush, um, you can see in this sort of motion I'm doing, trying to create some rough version. Now, the actual brush here, the actual paint here is quite dry, it's not too much water. So a little bit of burnt umber there, viridian green, mixed up in that dark area, the, the dark, um, the painting, the mixing well I reserve for the darks, and a little bit of red as well, a bit of neutral tint for good measure. And uh, yeah, just, just fill in this top left corner Mine's, this, this colour's still quite green. I could have gone actually a good bit darker. Um, but you don't want to, whatever colour you go in, with, go in with, you've got to do it once. You can't really paint this and then go in with another layer on top. It's going to look a little bit too overworked and it could end up being a little bit sort of muddy looking as they say so i've got to keep it sort of fitting. and then um with a little bit of water just dropping a little bit of water into that foliage and let if it's on if the board's on a bit of a slope then just let it sort of drip down a bit and that can introduce some quite nice effects if the paint's not too thick In the middle of the canopy, I do need to not have too much of the paper showing through. So I need to fill in some of those little gaps there. Paint, just cover up some of those gaps. So we've got, as we come to the outside of the canopy, we've got an increasing amount of light showing through. And then just in a, in a fairly random way, just on the periphery, just sort of add in a few little marks here and there, some distant um, branches that have escaped out. Not have it looking too, too perfect like a, like a lollipop, which I sometimes do. I look at, look at the trees and they're just too perfect. They're like a, a circle or a, um, an oval or something like that. Look like a, a clipped tree, whereas this one obviously isn't clipped, it's more unkempt and um, need to reflect that way I've done it. So just beyond that tree, that um, light green's working quite well. Over there. And what I what I do now is come a little bit lower down, but Starting at the back, adding a bit more form to the distant shops. So that's just above, the where I'm, where I'm painting now is just above the shop, shop lines. They, they just go all the way around. It's a nice walk if you're into souvenir shops, just walking around. Um, I, think, I think a lot of it's pedestrianized now. This photograph was taken maybe my source photo was taken maybe five to seven years ago so we're now 2020 um, I think that was roughly the time it was maybe 2013 2014 2015 something like that anyway um, blinds just goes to show you can look back through some of your old photographs and those that you dismissed at the time as not worthy of being painting subjects. As, you're, as you get a little bit more experience with watercolour, you can go back to those old photographs and 
suddenly you look at them in a new light and you think, well, yeah, actually, I could actually make a, a painting of that. And we're currently, this is, so this video is made in June 2020 and we're currently in a sort of semi-lockdown. Um, we're only supposed to go out outdoors really for essential travel. So it does restrict you in, in what you can paint if you're into plain air, plain air painting which I love doing, but at the moment I can't really do that. Um, so you've got to go back to your old photos and try and make something of them. And then when, also when you look at an old photograph, try and think about just zooming in to some part of it. Um, not necessarily looking at the overall picture, but just uh, maybe crop it or uh, just look at some small part of it just to see if you can anything grabs your attention but I am finding that recently going back through some quite old photos and uh, dismiss them first time round but now they actually look half decent these blinds on the right hand side I do need to cover them up because they're too light it's uh, over there on the right hand side they are too bright I need to tone them down a bit. So a little bit of a transparent glaze over them with this color. Um, hopefully they'll still give the impression of a little bit of the uh, sort of canvassy, that brown, so a light, what color would I describe it? So light red canvas type material. Um, now completing the shops, the uh, street level. Paint around these two cars. Got some horizontal shadows coming over from the from the tree. Carefully paint around the top of that main car. But I don't need to be too precise with painting underneath the shop lines because I can create little shapes in there of people and objects and so on and little bits of point of sale material out on the street, something like that. So get these two cars in and a bit of shadow underneath them, which I use. So sometimes when I'm painting in boats or cars, I'll have one brush for doing the body of the object, the car, and then a generally a slightly smaller brush that I've got ready preloaded with the dark shadow mix. So I'm using a small synthetic brush here for those dark shadows, bit of neutral tint. Allers in crimson, ultra in blue, gives a nice dark. And this will be a bit thicker than the body of the object, the car, and uh, do them all in one. So this darker color will just seep up a little bit to give a soft edge in the, in the car. Neutral tint and arrows in crimson. Gives a nice warm dark uh, colour. So under the under these shop lines just Creating a bit of just painting a few sort of random strokes really um, that have come over to the right hand side. Now, I can't go in too quick on the right hand side because the shop blinds are still a little bit damp. 
don't want too soft an edge to define the edges of the shop line so I need to let that dry just a bit and as I'm going in I can just see if it's, um, if, it's if the paint's moving at all as I did on the left hand side create a little bit of form for the cars just going over the rooftops of the cars So while the, those blinds are still, I can see they're still a little bit too wet. So I'll paint in, the, as I did with the two cars on the left, paint in the body of these four main cars on the right hand side. Let's have a red one in there. So a blue, a red, um, and then continue on with a sort of bluish theme for the other two cars. Maybe this one is just pointing towards us, so a bit more of a windscreen reflecting the reflecting the light, and then the fourth one, and then whatever on the right hand side. Now for the shadows of these cars, the uh, shadow below. So I've got a, a thin slither, slither of light underneath the car. So you often find there's a, there's a sort of horizontal layer of light between the two wheels underneath the chassis of the car. Um, just continue that over to the right hand side. Now back to the tops of the cars, creating a little bit of extra form here. The blinds are hopefully a little bit drier now. So I'll be able to get in the, uh, the, the edges of the blinds. So there's, there's one there. And then another one. Try to think about perspective. The lines are gonna get closer together as we go further away. And now over the tops of the cars, creating that form, little bit of an indentation between the cars. Not have them, not have the cars too close together. And down to the right. So that's now starting to give, putting in those blinds and the dark shadow below those blinds is just starting to give some. I think at this stage I'm starting to pull things back from a complete disaster earlier on um, to something now that is more closely resembling my the, the impression that I wanted of the scene. Now there's my tree trunks coming up. Not too perfect. I don't want them to be lovely and straight and hard edges just uh, a quirky sort of kink in them and um, angles to them uh, some random lines and then a bit more of a thicker darker paint for the base of the trees where there's a sort of uh, well, over, I think over to the left, there's there's like a little park or green area, some, some gardens. Obviously a group of trees as well. But this is, now this is quite an important bit, doing this fan shape of shadow for the trees. Um, and I want to keep this like a sort of fairly warm shadow. Don't want it too grey, uh, but I've made this up with mainly a bit of alloys and crimson and ultramarine blue. Now I'll start off quite dark at the base of the tree, then as I come away, try and make it just a little bit lighter, but not a complete 
blanket covering of the ground. I do want little bits um, showing through. Also, I need to remember that this is going to dry quite lighter as well. Uh, so I need to compensate for that. Just random marks out in the street. Got to fill in that area on the uh, in the in the road. Just putting a few little dabs in there. Join the shadows up to the car. So they're going to be in in the distance. The shadows are more horizontal, and as we come as we fan around, they're they're getting more vertical um, on the left hand side. Check things with my finger, see if uh, things are drying nicely. So the blind, that blind in the middle, I need to have an angular shadow over it, just so that there's a bit of transition from the the blinds on the left that are totally in the light, and then as they snake around to the right, they're totally in the shade. But let's have one that's just sort of half, half in the shade, half in the sun. Now I'm coming on to really the, the detail stage now. I've sort of transitioned into the detail stage um, from the, the darker values, now into details smaller brush and with the with these apartments just get in a few lines here and there defining the these different layers just a little bit not too much bit of a lost and found not a continuous line around a few little gaps in there just accentuate the curvature of the building going around to the right. Just need to mix up the shadow of the, I just noticed the shadow of the tree, I wasn't quite happy with where it joins the car, so I've, everything was still wet, so I just used my fingertip to smudge that and um, blend it in a little bit more. Sometimes with my fingertips, I've just had to check there. I had a bit too much paint on my on my fingertips, so if it's wet, I I can I'm in danger of smudging, um, leaving little deposits in the brighter areas. So I need to be a bit careful, a bit careful there. Right, rooftop, maybe an aerial or something at the top of the building, and then some windows or doorways that we can just see up there on the on that layer as it goes round to the right make them a little I need to observe perspective and have have a slight angle to the tops of the these windows but I'm not painting in, we're trying to simplify the scene. This is the most complex thing. There's lots of railings and um, planters on the, on the balconies. Uh, if you painted in every single window, it just, it wouldn't look so fresh. Uh, I, I used to paint that like that a long time ago, but now I think I get a little bit looser as time goes on. And um, 
yeah, you're just trying to, when you're simplifying things, you're just suggesting things with a particular brush mark or less of it or more random placing um, of that. And of course, below the shop, below the uh, shop lines, really complicated in there. You've got to simplify that. And that's what I've done with the way I went over over the whole area with it, with the um, the versatile, <laughs> the versatile brush, uh, with that sort of jagged edge to it, um, just really helps me get in the impression of a complex scene, but simplified through the brush marks. So, a couple of figures. I normally, if, if the figures are above a large shadow area, I generally paint the shadows first and then paint the figures in afterwards with thicker paint, but bring the figures down into the shadow area so that we get a bit like the shadow underneath the cars. There's just going to be a a nice soft transition from one to the other. Now with the other guy, um, I quite like that little bit of white that's in the in the sort of mid midriff of this figure. So I'll I'll play on that and just put in the trousers of this figure, and hopefully, what we will get then is the appearance of a, a person with light, the light hitting their, their tummy, if you like, and then the shoulders a little bit in the shade. Now, the edge of the pavement or sidewalk or whatever you cut, call it, um, needs to be darker and it, and it sort of, it goes up and then it curves around this corner of the, of the park and, and uh, it just sort of goes around, goes around to the left, goes down the street, but make it thicker where I am now and then a little bit thinner as I go up and, uh, yeah, a soft line. Put in a few, few little verticals here and there. Could be street signs or lamp posts. Just to break up some of those blinds, they need to be, need to have something over them. With the tiles, I'm using a little bit of like a dark red color rather than too dark, like a black or a, a blue. Just uh, with this smallest brush, get in a few lines for the tiles, but just really in on this bit that's facing us, just where it starts to Go around to the right, just a bit of face here to add a, add a bit, of, bit of definition to the edge of the tiles there. One or two marks for some distant windows. And with it, at this stage of the painting, with a brush like this, I'm just really going around the painting and adding in little marks here and there. Um, where I think there might might it it might just assist with 
some extra interest. Uh, I need to get some details on the cars with um, some bumpers, fenders, back lights. Perhaps just one or two little windows and details. Definitely nothing down there over, over on the left hand side. If you look at the source photo, you can see, and especially if you zoomed into the photo, that's probably the worst thing to do is, is zoom in to a photo. Um, I think that uh, with a photograph, if you look at a small thumbnail size image of, of what you're trying to paint, it really does help you simplify the scene by looking at a much smaller size of it. Um, by all means, zoom in if you don't really know what something is in the picture, but zoom, zoom, zoom back out again quite rapidly. Um, because really, I do find that uh, for me, um, that would uh, encourage me to be a lot more detailed and I, I want to try and simplify things. So definitely down there in the, uh, in the distance on the left hand side, kept very simple. Now I've added in a few tire marks, if you like, along the road, not too many, but with that small brush, dry brush strokes, um, just drag that over just a few of those to indicate a little bit more texture to the surface. Um, while I've got this brush, adding a bit more of an angular shadow, I just think it needed a bit more of um, a stronger angle there. It was too shallow, the angle before, so uh, almost like a 45 degree angle, I think works better. Use the finger again. Some thinner branches and twigs. And we're now getting to really the conclusion of the of the painting. And I'll, I'll do a, a little summary as I always do in my videos. I run I just run over a little sort of um, debrief of the uh, painting and almost critique myself in a way, um, just to check it out and see what I could have done better and. Um, see how I fared with the objective of simplifying a complex a complex building shape and um, lots of different objects. So uh, a, a little bit of white paint in moderation just to add a bit of highlight into those figures, tops of the heads, shoulders. That we're sort of looking more into the light there so um, that might just help make those figures pop a little bit, make them stand out a bit more. Nice bit of light against the, um, the tops of those. And also on the left-hand side of some of the verticals, lamp posts and the like. Um, and a few little bits and pieces underneath the shop lines. So, there we are. So this is the end painting, um, a little bit of debrief and summary. So objective was to simplify a quite, quite a complex building shape with not only these different 
layers to contend with in the perspective um, and a, a steep angle on the right hand side, less steep on the left, but the curvature of them. And they weren't perfect. If you look at the actual photograph, um, they aren't uh, regular um, curves. They're, every layer is subtly different and um, quite, quite difficult to think really how you might approach that with a loose watercolour. But certainly um, that was quite complex. A second area that was quite complicated was below the shop, below the shop lines deep in the shadows, the more you look in there, you see little bits and pieces, some figures walking around, um, another sort of complication then, you know, really the way I did that was just really adding in some bold strokes and perhaps a little bits of red here and there, leaving out um, little bits, you do see that jagged edge there and that jagged edge just, just lets the viewer make up their own mind about what's going on there. And then the third area of complexity to simplify was the background, um, this whole area here, and um, the, the shadows going across the, um, in the bottom left hand corner there. So hopefully that kind of worked out all right. So there we are, um, a Mihas scene in watercolor, trying to simplify the scene, going quite loose, um, trying to be, trying to use some impressionistic techniques, giving the impression of lots of windows, car details, figures and the like. Hope you like it. Catch up with you next time. Thank you.